early on that first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent down over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels sitting over where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Jenny, why are you looking? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbanai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do you not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, when I was growing up, this was one of my favorite stories. The Berenstein Bears and the Squeaky Old Tree. Now, I had this and it came along with a tape. You know, the tapes that would read it to you, and it always started out with instructions. When it's time to turn the page, you'll hear the sound. And it was different for every book. I think for this one, it was, ooh. And after you were given the instructions, it always said, anyone remember this? Let's begin now. No one else wants to listen to these as much as I do. Let's begin now. I just want to share the beginning of this story with you. So let's begin now. Three little bears. One with a light, one with a stick, one with a rope. A spooky old tree. Do they dare go into that spooky old tree? Do they dare? Now this is as far as I'm going to take you for now. Can't you picture them outside the tree, peering, wondering? Do we do it? Do we go into that tree? What does it mean if we do? What does it mean if we don't? Do I dare? 
John's account of the resurrection of Jesus contains such a moment. Though it's easy for us to miss in all that happens in those chapters from one, in those verses from 1 to 18 this morning. But there was, there was a moment of decision. A moment asking, do I dare go We heard that Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb together, that they were both running to the tomb, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. It says he bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. There he is, peering over the side of the tomb. Does he dare enter the tomb? What does it mean if he does? What does it mean if he doesn't? In the Gospel of John, the empty tomb is just given to us as a fact. But at this point in the reading, even though we know the rest of the story, at this point in the reading, we don't know much else. All we know is that the tomb is empty. The meaning of that empty tomb, the implications of that empty tomb, but that's just left up to each person for the time being. Peter reaches the tomb after the beloved disciple, but he doesn't stop. He runs straight into the tomb. He goes in, he sees, he goes home. This is all we know. The beloved disciple stands outside, looking in, trying to decide, does he dare go in? He does make the decision to enter. And it says he sees and he believes. He sees and believes something. It's not clear exactly what he believes. Hey, there's a lot in that one word. There's a lot that we can relate to. We are all here this morning. We flock to the churches every Easter day because we believe something. We have experienced something. Even if we cannot express exactly what that something is. Even if we are still trying to figure it out. Because the truth of this journey of faith is that at times in this story, we will all stand at the edge, peering in and wondering, do I dare go in? And then there'll be other times that we can say with confidence, we have made the decision to enter the story. Here we are, we have seen and we believe. Even if we struggle to find the right words to name exactly and yes, there's true that in this story we may enter and exit and enter and exit all throughout our journey. And then it's also true that for some of us this morning, we're pretty content. We're pretty satisfied with where we are in life with God and just in life in general. But I promise you, promise you, God will shake you. If the story of the resurrection promises anything, just when we think we know something, God will surprise us and will wonder again, do we dare enter into this new thing that God is up to? When Mary and Peter and the beloved disciple arrive that first Easter morn, they are again invited into something, something new with God in Jesus. When they enter into the sight of death, an empty tomb, they are invited to the grand new journey. Now you can still visit this site. In fact, when you go to the Holy Land, you can visit the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It's built on the site where many believe the crucifixion took place, as well as where the body lay in the tomb. You 
walk in this huge ornate church, you walk up some stairs, you'll come to this place with some rocks, some crosses, lots of icons, lots of golden imagery. And then you can walk down and a little away, still within the same church, and you can stand in line and wait for your chance to kneel inside the empty chamber. It holds about two to three people. I have a picture of my husband from inside the tomb when we, when we went on our first visit. But when I went to the Holy Land about 10 years later, I was taken somewhere else. In addition to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, I was taken to another site, another tomb, the Garden Tomb, it is called. Others believe this to be the true place where the body lay. I share all this to say, yes, we can visit a site. But that's not the point, right? We can go, we can visit a site, we can enter into the space where we think Jesus' body may have laid, and it is memorable, and it is a holy experience. After that, what? We stand, peering in. We may even make the decision to enter, but eventually, eventually, we have to move forward. Just as the disciples. We can't go back to first century Jerusalem. It doesn't do us much good to identify the tomb, even though that's where the drama started over 2,000 years ago. The drama moved on. Jesus is not there. Jesus is on the move. Jesus is alive. The story continues. I know you have all been burning with anticipation to know if those three little bears entered the spooky old tree. So we left them outside the tree. Do they dare go into that spooky old tree? Yes, they dare. And what follows is an exciting, yes, a little bit scary of a story. There are moments where they have to decide if they will continue to move forward, if they will continue to continue on. But it is a story that changes these three little bears. They will not be the same bears that they were before. From now on, they will be the bears that dared to enter into that spooky old They lost things along the way. They learned things. The experience they had together will be a little different for each one of them, but it will not be forgotten. It not only shapes them as individual bears, but it will shape them together. One with the other. Today we celebrate that what Mary, Peter, And the beloved disciple found that first Easter morning was an empty tomb. We celebrate that at the place of death, they experienced life. We celebrate that in Jesus, God said, this story is not over. In fact, a whole new story is beginning. Do you dare to enter into it? What does it mean if you do? It means that you will be entering a story that is exciting and, yes, a little bit scary. It means we are going to open ourselves up to be changed. That if we allow our lives to be shaped by the teaching of Jesus, we will not be the same. Our experiences of the resurrected Christ will vary. Our witness and understanding of God at work in the world will not be the same how the Holy Spirit will use us in this place will be different for each of us. But this story, this story of cross and resurrection, it will do what it has always done. Shape us as individuals, but also
so as a people, one to another. And if we don't take the chance and enter, well, we miss out on the gift of sharing grace and love and joy and forgiveness and reconciliation and struggle with with God, with the community of faith, and with the world that God created. So yes, this story is not over. The story of Easter always celebrates a beginning. Do you dare to believe it?